Hey everyone, Jared Tay here, the founder of the Digibyte blockchain. Today I wanted to bring you a Digibyte version 8.22 development update, as well as like a 30,000 foot overview of core blockchain protocol development and the added complexities that are involved with the whole process. So as many of you know, we've been working on version 8.22 since last fall. There was a series of events that happened over the last year and a half that led us to establish a new development process where multiple peer reviewers are involved and it's actually been really good and it's really taking Digibyte development to the next level. However, at the same time, version 8.22 is the most complex and comprehensive upgrade we have ever done. And I'm gonna get into some more details to explain exactly why that is. Uh, but before I do that, I, I want to kind of take a minute to step back and ask the community, hey, take a deep breath. I know that there's a lot of fudgsters out there that are like, oh, nothing's happening. 8.22 is never going to get here. That, that's just not true. Um, we're working hard, but it's important to remember we're all volunteers. We all have other you know, day jobs and sources of income that, you know, things we have to do in order to put food on the table. So things take time. But we're actually, if you, if you take a step back and you put everything in perspective, we're actually in a good situation. And I am very excited for where things are gonna lead us. So without further ado, I wanna kinda give you some specific context onto what I really mean and what I'm talking about when I say added complexity. And the first thing to keep in mind is right now, uh, Bitcoin has a market cap of almost a trillion dollars, right? If you add in all the other UTXO derived blockchains that are independent like Litecoin, like Digibyte and others, you easily have a code base that is worth well over a trillion dollars. So literally the code base that Bitcoin's built upon, which Digibyte is an improvement on, is literally a trillion dollar code base. And I believe it's the most complicated code base in the world today. So for those people out there who are non-technical, non-developers who have no idea what they're talking about saying, oh, we can just fork it and make the quick changes and then it's all good and we can roll it out. That's complete and utter nonsense. And here's why I'm gonna explain why, right? So first of all, if you, well, before I do that, let me take a step back, right? Um, I put out a tweet a while ago uh, that said, there are three types of critical system software. There's safety critical, mission critical, business critical, and there's actually a fourth in some definitions, which say security critical, which Bitcoin and Digibyte and the core code base meet all those. So these, this kind of definition um, is up there on par with like nuclear reactor core code. You wanna make sure that code is stable, is well tested, and is well cared for, and you gotta be very hesitant before you make major changes. And when you do make major changes, you gotta test, 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 and test some more, right? So to give you a little bit more detail on how complex uh, the Bitcoin and Digibyte core protocols are, um, we need to look at how many lines of code are actually in um, these, these code bases. So you have to forgive me here for a second. I'm uh, new to OVS or OBS, the Open Broadcast Software. And um, there we go. Okay. Let me minimize this. I'm trying to do this so I can talk while you have it on screen. So if we look at the Bitcoin core code base, when Bitcoin first launched, in 2008 2009 satoshi had roughly four files right and between those four files you can actually see it here uh, there was basically main.cpp um, node.h node.cpp there was roughly 3,000 lines of code when bitcoin first started like the the very first version right if you look at the core code base today, there's over 620,000 lines of code. So think about that. In a decade, 
there was well over a half a million lines of code added it to the complexity. And I can tell you in the last two years, there has been more development on Bitcoin than the previous eight years before that. So we're talking about a very complex beast, right? To compare that, Digibyte currently has around 700,000. So we actually have, because of the added algos and some other added stuff, we've actually got another 50 to 80,000 lines of code on top of the Bitcoin code, right? Well, this merge that we've been working on and what we're doing with version 8.22 is we're taking all the work that Bitcoin has done between version 1.0 or uh, 0.17 and version 2.2, which is five versions of Bitcoin, and we're rolling it into one big update for Digibyte to benefit from all the cool stuff that Bitcoin's added. Well, that, so far in the work that we've done over the past six, seven months, okay, we have 281,000 code additions and 92,000 lines of code deleted. So literally, we have tweaked or modified it or update, updated half of the lines of code in the entire Digibyte core protocol, right? Now to compare the Digibyte core protocol with about 700,000 lines of code and Bitcoin, you know, roughly 620, 640,000 lines of code. And you know, and this depends on which um, features you compile it with. If you compare that to the Linux core kernel operating system so this is like the minimum amount of code that you get to run a linux operating system which is you know for those of you who don't know billions of your devices are powered by the linux core kernel that linux core kernel only has sixty-three thousand lines of code i just checked that this morning so think about this complexity for a minute when bitcoin first started three thousand lines of code you know 12 13 years later 620 650,000 lines of code and it's been it's been averaging about 50,000 lines of code per year over the last five years okay then you compare that to Linux with only 63,000 so this is a very complex very dynamic system and it's so easy for stuff to get broken and for things to happen well one of those things that we've had that we're, we're having issues with uh, that's actually been the main delay over the last three months is dandelion so between bitcoin version one or 0 0.17 and the latest bitcoin version 2.2 there was a massive amount of mempool rework which for those of you that don't know when your client sends a transaction the first thing it enters is something called the mempool right well mempool is integral to the functionality of dandelion so for those that don't know what dandelion is dandelion is a privacy protection mechanism when you send a transaction it doesn't broadcast your IP. So, you know, people who are running listeners can't basically link specific IPs to specific wallets, right? Well, we have, in order for Dandelion to function, something called stem pool, right? Well, stem pool mirrors mempool, but because you had all these major changes in the latest two versions of Bitcoin, um, it, it effectively broke Dandelion in numerous places to the point where we've had to completely rewrite it from the ground up. Now, there's so much complexity involved in this process that even the Bitcoin Core developers, who are absolutely all for adding Dandelion to Bitcoin Core, actually gave up on it on the last two or three releases and said, well, it's too complex, there's too many things that are broken, we'll do it later. So this brings me to my next point about added complexities of these systems and what i mean by systems i mean blockchains right and, and this applies to bitcoin this applies to digitite this applies to ethereum even right um and a lot of times with specific features for a blockchain it can take years for it to be properly tested implemented developed and released right so for instance with segwit it took bitcoin numerous years uh for segwit to actually be rolled out right uh, look at Taproot. Taproot has been in development. Uh, the first time I heard about Taproot was at a developer conference in Hong Kong in 2015. So it took seven years from the first proposal to the point it was actually implemented and rolled out in Bitcoin, right? Um, let's take a look at uh, Ethereum 2.0. Ethereum 2.0 has been talked about for seven years as well. It, it was originally supposed to be rolled out in 2019 and here we are in 2022 and it still hasn't been rolled out, right? 
And and so what happens is when you have these very complex code code bases where you keep adding features on on top of features on top of features, it causes a lot of issues. Uh, you know, to give you an example, look at the Ethereum roadmap that was released last fall. I spent almost five hours um, a, a week or two ago trying to dive into the technical details on each one of these features. And after five years, I still didn't quite bring it all together and, and understand it. And this is after a decade of working on blockchains. And it's not just me. Um, you know, you look and see what one of uh, Ethereum's lead developers just said last week. You know, he said, in Ethereum's history, complexity has never decreased. Every Ethereum improvement proposal is piling on top. Every major change, merge, sharding, vertical, stateless is one more nail. I'm extremely frustrated when a research proposal says everything's figured out. It's just engineering now. And he goes on to say, as good as it feels that we're approaching the merge, I must emphasize that Ethereum is not going in a clean direction. You know, it, it's achieving results, but it's also piling complexity like there's no tomorrow. If the protocol doesn't get slimmer, it's not going to make it. Well, this, this kind of brings up my next point. You know, when it comes to Digibyte development, we want to keep it simple, straightforward, and focused, but we also want to make sure, most importantly, it's stable and it's secure. Because with this many changes, this many things, and, and this many issues, it's not as simple as just forking from the latest version of Bitcoin and slapping a Digibyte logo on it and then rolling it out, as some people think that that's possible and, you know, good luck to you, go fork yourself, right? Like, it's, it's not going to work, trust me. Um, you know, so I know that there's a lot going on and I know that maybe I've gone over some of your heads, but I'm trying to really kind of frame the entire perspective for people to really kind of show you where we're at. So what's the current status? Well, currently we've got a bug because of Dandelion um, that when you run the client, it runs fine for a couple hours. You can send and receive transactions, but it randomly crashes. And we fixed a couple of these random bugs, but it's, it's dandelion related. We're working through it. We're close, but I'm not going to give you an approximation on when that's possible because I thought we would have had it out a couple months ago. Um, like I was hoping I, I originally was actually hoping by Christmas, but this is another reason with such a complex code base. I don't like giving release dates because you know, things, issues come up. I mean, this is very, very complicated software. So, uh, the next thing that we're working on um, are tests. So what are what are tests? Well, tests are how we discover these bugs and that's how we're discovering some of these bugs. So we don't release them up into the wild. Well, there's literally hundreds of tests that can be run that are automated. So a test is basically code that is written to help you develop bug or find bugs and, and make sure everything in the software performs as needed, right? But that's another area where with every additional version, every additional feature, there's added complexity to the test. So there's almost just as much code written in tests as there is in the actual protocol itself. So that's another uh, very complicated aspect of this. So um, without running on for too long, I want everybody to know we're working on it. There's multiple devs involved. Um, I, I want to also say, despite what people say, um, I'm not controlling what goes in and out. I am just one of many reviewers and it takes three reviewers for a code edition to be included, right? So for all the nonsense and all the drama and all the FUD in the group out there who keeps attacking me and blaming everything and oh, Jared's fault, everything's stagnated, nothing's happening, simply not true. And you know, I would encourage you instead of, you know, causing issues, why don't you come help us? And if you don't know how to code, support us, you know, help organize a, a developer um, bounty program, right? I mean, that's one of the things I'm talking to some of the people uh, about the Digibyte Foundation. You know, it would be awesome if we could get a community driven pool of funds together to sponsor specific either developers or bounties uh, to help attract more people to help. And, you know, I can say that there's at least five of us that have been working uh, consistently on this upgrade, which I said is massive. I mean, you're literally talking about half the lines of code, uh, you know, 300,000 lines of code that have been changed or altered or modified, right? That's a lot. So, you know, keep that in mind. 
um, you know, we're working on it. It's going to get done. 8.22 is going to be the best version of Digibyte yet. It's going to definitely be the most well tested. Um, and also we're doing other things like, you know, there's a lot of talk about what happens in the year 2035 when the last Digibyte is mine. Does the reward actually go to zero like it's supposed to? Or does it, you know, continue on at one? Which is, you know, what people are talking about, the oh, infinite supply inflation bug, which has not been fully tested, documented, and sorted, but that will be done before version 8.22 is shipped. But the last step before we start working on that is this dandelion issue, which is actually a way worse issue because if people start sending transactions, the client crashes, and then there's an issue with those transactions not getting to where they're supposed to be, that's a real problem. So we're gonna make sure that that doesn't happen. And I, I can promise you when, when it ships, that it's not gonna be an issue. So, and in fact, because there's been so much work done on our implementation of Dandelion, there's a good chance that the Bitcoin core devs could basically say, hey, look, look what Digibyte did. We could actually use that and it could actually be the path for Dandelion to get merged into Bitcoin core because there's just there's so much complexity and so much going on there. Um, so there is an upside to that. So. Uh, I know this video has probably gone on a little bit longer, but I know that there is a lot of frustration out there. And and just because, you know, if people look on, on Gitter, which is the dev chat, doesn't mean there's not chats happening. And in fact, here recently, a lot of the conversation has been happening directly on GitHub, uh, which GitHub is where developers live, right? And, you know, you can click around. There's a lot of the stuff. It's not easy to see, but it's there. And if you go to the Digibyte core repository here you should see that there's not just the digibyte protocol there's this rosetta which is the coinbase node api that's been worked on there's a website there's a server uh there's utility i mean we have uh dozens of repositories that we've worked on and updated that are here so there's a lot more to the digibyte ecosystem than just simply um digibyte uh, the core protocol, which the core protocol is obviously the most important part, but there's also been ongoing work to make it easier to develop and build on top of Digibyte. Not to mention a lot of us devs, actually all the devs, they're, the projects they're working on outside of the core protocol are actual applications and utility for end users built on top of DGB. So there's a lot going on um, and it's not just you know, what, what some people say. So um, that's kind of, uh, I guess, the 10,000 foot overview. If you have more specific questions or you want to have some, you know, a little bit more technical details explained, please let me know. Tag me on Twitter. Hit me up. Um, but to end this video, I really want to thank all of you out there in the Digibyte community who believe in Digibyte, who, you know, promote it, tell people you know about it and work to make you know it, it, it better and, and more adopted every day because i truly believe and i would not be here you know going on nine years if i didn't believe this i truly believe digibyte is the best combination of speed security and decentralization in the world today and it's going to be very important for the world of tomorrow and you know i can't thank you enough there's a tremendous amount of upside and Digibyte's really one of the only truly decentralized blockchains in the world today. So um, with that being said, thank you, everybody. And until next time, uh, Digibyte on. Cheers.